It's Thursday, June 18. This is the news on a PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. As of Thursday morning, five new imported cases of COVID-19 have been reported by the Health Ministry, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 626. The new cases are a 56-year-old man from St. Catherine, a 21-year-old and a 37-year-old woman, both of Kingston and St. Andrew addresses, a 37-year-old man from Clarendon, and a 56-year-old woman from Westmoreland. All arrived recently on flights from the United States. Meanwhile, two more patients have recovered and have been released from care. The country's recovery rate now stands at 72% one critically ill and one moderately ill patient are among 165 active cases. Science, Energy and Technology Minister Favor Williams says plans are in place to develop awareness campaigns for citizens and institutions following the recent passage of the Data Protection Act. The minister was making her sectoral presentation in the House of Parliament on Wednesday. PBCJ's Gabriel Thompson has the details. Educating Jamaicans on their rights to their personal data. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology M. Set Favel Williams says Jamaicans should expect soon the establishment of the Office of the Information Commissioner, an entity charged with overseeing the handling of personal data in the possession of businesses and the government. Mr. Speaker, with the recent passage of the Data Protection Act 2020, the ministry will turn its focus to implementing a broad based public awareness program to educate Jamaicans on their right to their personal data and to ensure institutions that collect personal data know their responsibilities and obligations. We will begin the process of establishing the Office of the Information Commissioner, an entity that which will be charged with the responsibility of overseeing the manner in which personal data in the possession of businesses and government is handled. We will also begin the process of establishing the Data Protection Oversight Committee that will be charged with holding the Information Commissioner accountable to the public in the performance of the Commissioner's function. Making her sectoral presentation in the House of Parliament on Wednesday, Minister Williams touted recently passed data protection legislation as a means of achieving growth across various sectors in Jamaica. Jamaica's impetus for promulgating the data protection legislation are many and varied. While informed by the Jamaican Constitution, other factors have played a part. These include the, advance, the advancement in technology, and the increase in ability to process, store, and distribute data, the increase in electronic commerce, and obligations imposed by bilateral and multilateral agreements, specifically trade agreements. For Jamaica to achieve a decade of growth to 2030 and to anchor our peace, prosperity, and resilience, we must help our people imagine a new Jamaica where science is embraced by all and science is solving our big problems in health, national security and agriculture. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Carl Samuda has been appointed as the full-time education minister. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement during an address at the Caribbean Maritime University on Wednesday. Professor Shirley, um, Minister Samuda, that we can now have the ministry being fully run by a minister of education who will be overseeing everything. So I'm, I'm here today saying that Minister Samuda is now not the minister without portfolio, but after today he will be the, the minister of education. Mr. Samuda was appointed to act as education minister on March 20 last year. This after the previous minister, Rural Reed, was fired from the cabinet over corruption allegations. Veteran parliamentarian Mike Henry has been given the nod to assume the mantle of labor and social security minister. He will replace Shahini Robinson. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging the management of the Caribbean Maritime University to cooperate with the Parliament's probe into its operations. The PAAC is a very important committee of Parliament. And their role is to ferret out, to dig, to investigate. And that's an important part 
of our democracy. I think what the CMU has to do is provide information. Respond as much as you can. Um, it is a, a, a difficult process. And when it gets into the media, everybody gets accused. And the general public is not always discerning. The general public sometimes is not going to spend the time to read beyond the headlines. And therefore, opinions can be formed. So you have a task over a long period of time to change the perspective and the perception and the views of the organization. And the only way to do that is just to you know, answer the questions, provide as much information as you can. His call came as he addressed the first meeting of the new Caribbean Maritime University Council. We have governance rules and governance frameworks which helps to mitigate the risks. We have people who have knowledge of those rules, who make it their business to know what the rules are. Then we have people who exercise good judgment. And then, of course, there is always good personal conduct. So we look for persons with unquestioned integrity, knowledge of the field, proven competence in the areas that would be necessary to run such an institution, visionary thinking, commitment to excellence, and a commitment to Jamaica. Everyone sitting here would have met all the criteria listed. The new council was put in place to manage the functionality of the institution with visionary thinking, commitment to excellence, and Jamaica. The previous council resigned as fallout from a corruption investigation that saw the arrest and charging of former CMU head Professor Fritz Pinnock, as well as former Education Minister Ruel Reed. Child abuse is any act or failure to act on the part of a parent or a caretaker which results in death, serious physical or emotional harm, sexual abuse or exploitation of a child. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, held a virtual forum where they looked at the emotional scars children who suffer abuse or neglect feel and the impact on their development. They also highlighted the importance of prevention and intervention efforts. Child psychologist Dr. Kai Morgan says child abuse is a type of trauma that can trigger a clear response in the brain. It impacts and it stunts their emotional development, right? Even sometimes their physical development, their academic development, their learning. It has very far reaching impact. So we may see things like depression, we may see anxiety. We may see even behavioral problems. So children are acting as we sometimes say bad, badly, right? And these things may all be underneath the surface coming from the trauma that they've experienced. 14,000 cases of child abuse were reported to the CPFSA last year. CEO of the agency, Rosalie Gage Gray, says investigators were assigned. To the homes, to schools, to the community to do the investigation to confirm whether or not the reports received are so. And once they go in and identify, then we work with other stakeholders to provide support. She says a team of psychologists and social workers across the island were assigned to each confirmed case, but that is not enough. For us to really grapple with the issue, we need to stop the abuse, which is why we have been having these forums, because we always will be tracing down these 14,000 cases. So we have to educate, sensitize our parents, our caregivers, our community members, and Jamaica as a, on a whole to protect our children. And what does it mean to protect your children? Because sometimes we feel they know, but not everybody knows. Minister of State in the Education and Youth Ministry, Alondo Terrilong, says the safety of children is a collective responsibility. 
It takes a village mm -hmm. to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really does. It takes an entire nation committed to the growth and development and prosperity of our children to ensure that the laws are enacted and also that the relevant values and, and, and attitudes are also in place. So child abuse is, is as simple as telling your child that you're coming like a workless mama or you're coming like a workless pupa. That is emotional abuse. It is also psychological abuse when you say to a child, you now come on to nothing. I'm a sorry say you did barn and, and you, know, you know what I mean? And, and we, have, we have mothers and fathers or men and women who have actually reproduced and caused the birth of children who refer to their children as it. Make sure that they kick it down. Make sure that they thump it down. And you know what I mean? And, and, and when you say to even some of the fathers that, listen, you know, you can't say, you can't refer to your child as me get a pitney. You know, it's not a situation where you're speaking about um, a pair of shoes that you got or, or, or a football that you got or, or a car that you got. This is a living, breathing human being with rights. You know, so we need to get past that stage, Dervon, and to our listeners and our viewers, you know, when you think that, oh, well, a child does not have rights or children should be seen but not heard, those days are done. Simone Absalom reporting for the news on PBCJ. The Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, has granted 15 export authorizations, resulting in exports to several countries to date. And Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, Audley Shaw, has dismissed concerns that several companies have been pulling out of Jamaica as a result of the failure of the CLA to implement the required import-export regulations. Marlon Samuels has that story. Recent media reports have indicated that several companies have been pulling out of Jamaica as a result of the failure of the CLA to implement the required import-export regulations. I want to state categorically that this is not so. The facts are that license holders in the me me medical cannabis industry are not hindered in their ability to export products from Jamaica, although the official regulations are not yet complete. Almost complete at this stage, though. But since November of 2018, license holders have had the opportunity to export cannabis inflorescence, buds, and extracts from Jamaica to jurisdictions across the world. This had been facilitated by the CLA through the establishment of interim measures for the export and import of cannabis, which are published on the authority's official website. To date, the CLA has granted 15 export authorizations. Minister Shaw was responding to complaints of a sluggish bureaucratic process in establishing a cannabis exporting business. He sought to set the record straight. To date, 63 licenses have been issued, 23 are at the granted stage, and 270 applicants are also conditionally approved and are now building out their facilities to meet the requirements for the granting stage of the process. Under our two pilot products, projects for the cultivation of ganja for medical use, for small farmers in a compound St. Elizabeth and Orange Hill in Westmoreland, the authority continues to provide regulatory oversight to ensure compliance with the legislation. To date, the CLA has granted cannabis exports to Canada, Australia, the Cayman Islands and other countries. Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, Audley Shaw was making his contribution to the 2020-21 sectoral debate in the House of Representatives. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. A $50,000 GoFundMe fundraiser has been established for the families of the two police officers killed last Friday in St. Catherine. Corporal Dane Biggs and Constable Ricardo Hilton were part of a police team that went to Horizon Park in Spanish Town on an operation. Four police officers were shot. Corporal Biggs and Constable Hilton succumbed. The two other officers remain in hospital. All funds collected will be presented to the families of the slain lawmen no later than 30 days after the close of the collection. Now for the latest gas prices and other market news, let's check in with Gabriel Thompson with the business report. According to the latest ex-refinery costs from Petrojam, motorists should see a decrease at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and an increase in the price of diesel, effective Thursday, June 18. 
87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $111.86 and $114.69 and $114.69 per liter, respectively down by $3 each. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $110.42 per liter, following an increase of 45 cents, while ultra-low sulfur is also up by 25 cents and will now be sold for $114.34 per liter. Meanwhile, kerosene increased in price by 25 cents and will be sold for $90.07 per liter. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $48.58 per litre, down by $1.63, and butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $50.86 per litre, after a decrease of $1.58. Marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. In Wednesday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index advanced by 4,048 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 70 stocks, of which 29 advanced, 30 declined and 11 traded firm. The Junior Market Index advanced by 5 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for 138 Student Living Jamaica, 1834 Investments Limited, and Berger Paints Jamaica. Stocks declined for AMG Packaging and Paper, Burita Investments Limited, and Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited. Trading firm were Blue Power Group, Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited, and Fosrich Company Limited. NCB Financial Group was the volume leader with over 7 million units, followed by Sagicor Select Funds Limited Financial with 5.9 million units and Mailpack Group Limited with 4.1 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Wednesday, June 17 ended trading at $140.75. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $105.93. The pound sterling traded for $178.99. And the euro ended trading at $160. Oil prices ticked up on Thursday after U.S. oil product stocks shrank, providing bulls with ammunition ahead of a meeting between OPEC producers and their allies to discuss their future output strategy. Brent crude futures were up 37 cents to settle at $41.08 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 25 cents to $38.21 a barrel. And that's it for the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Want to indulge in traditional local dishes with a gourmet twist? Then make your way to the Footprints Restaurant in New Kingston. Hi guys, so today we're visiting this gem of a location in New Kingston. It's on 5 Belmont Road. It's the best place to have lunch with your friends, have a lunch meeting, have your wedding reception or any other event. Welcome to Footprints Cafe. catering services of course we offer breakfast lunch and dinner we also host events so if you have weddings birthday anniversary dinner anything you can think of we have the space we will provide that for you we also have a private meeting room so of course if you have a group of say about 45 or less you can rent our meeting room so that you can you know have a space for you and your colleagues to dine and get things done while having some of our delicious food around so first and foremost persons have to sanitize and they have to wear their mask when they come in of course you cannot eat with the mask on but we just want to ensure that you're protected during the interaction with us and the waitresses 
So if you want to contact our courier, it's 908-0041. We also have, of course, the reservations office if you're interested in catering. That's 668-6910. Of course, you have to put 876 before that. For staff, we do have a pretty large, well, I won't say large. We have a, an average staff complement. So what we do, we do have them on a shift system in order to keep the numbers small. So at any given time, you'll have two persons working in the drinks area. We'll also have at least two persons working as waitresses or waiters. And we'll have about two persons working in the kitchen. So we try to keep it a minimum of 10 persons working at any given time just to ensure that we observe the social distancing. with a twist so we do offer your usuals we have our curried goats we do the oxtail but of course you know we spice it up with a little beer uh, we do the fish we do seafood so on days you'll have shrimp you'll have lobster fish is an everyday thing so if any day you're feeling for fish you can come by and grab some fish and of course the usual chicken dishes so we just try to keep it very local but we do add our own personal spice to it Asana, today I'm going to make a blended fruit punch. about two months due to COVID-19 so we did have some things in place but of course in the revamp we do brunch on a Sunday so you can look out on our social media page for the, when the brunch is reopened we do brunch on well every Sunday for the month and of course we do have some theme nights coming so just look out for what Footprints has to offer. In regional news the 35 member countries of the Organization of American States OAS including the United States and Canada have called on the APNU and AFC administration to begin the process of transition for the People's Progressive Party to take office. We have more in this newsroom Guyana report. The Organization of American States, OAS, made up of 35 countries, including the United States and Canada, noted in a statement Monday that there's nothing now that prevents the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, GCOM, from declaring the results of the March 2nd elections, which show a victory for the PPP. The OAS statement follows the submission of a report of the CARICOM scrutinizing team. The OAS called on the current APNU AFC administration to begin the process of transition, which will allow the legitimately elected government to take its place. The OAS said it wholly supports the findings of the CARICOM team of scrutineers that the results of the account were transparent and credible. According to the OAS, and I quote, elections are held to determine the will of the people. And once the people's wishes are clearly stated, they must be upheld, not only in the instances where they favor the incumbent. In this case, the results published in the report of the chief elections officer himself make it clear that the opposition PPPC has won the favor of the majority of Guyana's eligible voters. Their will must be respected, 
end quote. The OAS took note of the report submitted by the chief elections officer on June 13, which recorded multiple allegations of irregularities by a contesting party in each district, and which are then used as a basis for determining that the electoral process was not credible. As such, the OAS noted that there is little evidence in Lowell Fields' report of efforts to investigate or otherwise address any of the alleged irregularities presented. His contention that the entire election be set aside on this basis alone is astonishing, the OAS said. In this regard, the OAS reiterated its April 15 statement, where it recommended the exclusion of any official who had displayed partisan behavior during the electoral process. According to the OAS, while the CEO's approach to his report is therefore disappointing, it is not unexpected. The OAS reiterated that the recount process was conducted in a professional, transparent and impartial fashion, which allowed members of the Ghana Elections Commission, political parties and other stakeholders to accurately determine the results for each polling station. Reporting for the newsroom, Fariza Hanif. The Inter-American Development Bank, or the IDB Lab, is launching a special initiative across 15 countries in the Caribbean and Latin America to help revitalize the tourism sector, which is reeling from the effects of COVID-19. Public and private sector organizations can apply in two categories, development of the tourism labor force and environmental sustainability. Applications are open until July 31. The IDB Lab will consider public and private sector candidates to implement the projects in the following countries, the Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Jamaica, Nicaragua, Panama, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. In sports, members of the horse racing fraternity are raring to go in light of this weekend's reopening of the tracks. A large number of entries have been submitted to the event. Chairman of the Jamaica Racing Commission, JRC Clovis Metcalf, says 95% of racing personnel are licensed and insured. Racing at Caymanus Park was on lockdown since March 21 as the government moved to control the stem of the outbreak of the COVID-19 in the country. In cricket, opener Craig Brathwaite says he is focused on getting the job done despite concerns over his form ahead of next month's three test series against England. He says he is looking forward to getting the shine of the new ball and building that foundation for his teammates to follow. Brathwaite is West Indies leading opener but has averaged just 12 from his last 10 tests inside the last two years raising question marks about his place in the current touring party. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, the People's Station.